Welcome to New Fast Food. Today, we're putting the fast food focus on Taco Bell's Taco Lover's Pass. There's a lot of statistics starting to come out that are very, very interesting. All right, let's jump right in. Let's get started right away. Taco Bell kicked off 2022 by launching their Taco Lover's Pass nationwide. For $10 a month, pass holders receive one free taco a day with choices ranging from a regular taco all the way up to the Doritos Locos Taco Supreme. A true deal when used correctly and, as it turns out, just as good of a deal for Taco Bell. See, in my opinion, this whole thing works because Taco Bell has done such a great job maintaining a high value for their tacos over the years. The actual food cost in even the pass's most premium taco is minimal compared to the full menu price for that taco. Taco Bell's done a great job of maintaining that value over the years, usually just discounting the tacos as part of like a promo box and never actually dropping the price of the tacos themselves. Because of this, customers have just bought into the fact that a regular taco costs nearly $2 and a DLT Supreme costs nearly $3 or more. They're like $3.39 in my area. So a customer can feel like they are breaking even, even if they use the taco passes as little as three times a month. Meanwhile, sources over at Taco Bell fan website, livingmoss.com, they do a great job of detailing everything related to Taco Bell, by the way. You should definitely check out that website, livingmoss.com. They suggested that based on a similar recent offering, the DLT Supreme probably costs only about a half a dollar for Taco Bell to make. Now that shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone who has you know, done grocery shopping for those ingredients. Uh, they don't cost that much. So based on that, Taco Bell can break even, even if the customer comes back for 20 tacos a month. Now it's important to note that I'm only talking about the food cost here. I'm not considering rent, labor, utilities, anything like that. I'm only talking about the cost of the food and that's because those other things are sort of like sunk costs, meaning Taco Bell is already paying the rent, the utilities, the employees, whatever, uh, whether they offer the taco pass or not. So that's already a wild dynamic if you think about it. In the customer's mind, they're winning if they eat at least three or four tacos a month using the pass. And in Taco Bell's mind, they're winning even if the customer gets 20 tacos a month. That is wild. And it's all because Taco Bell has gotten customers to buy into the fact that tacos just cost that much. And it's that dynamic by itself that I think the Taco Lover's Pass was deemed an instant success because the other metrics that we're starting to hear about, uh, they don't paint nearly as rosy a picture uh, by themselves without this other dynamic. All right, now let's take a look at some of these other numbers because they are interesting. Uh, so uh, these are mostly coming from interviews with Taco Bell's chief digital officer, Zapora Allen. So first, she says that customers using the, ta the Taco Pass typically come to Taco Bell three times as often as compared to the same customers when they didn't have the pass. So that sounds fantastic, right? They're tripling the, the amount of business they get from, from each customer using the pass. All right, but let's stick a pin in that and keep going because it turns out it's not nearly as good as it sounds. All right, so she's also said that for the Taco Pass customers, uh, nearly half the time they come in, they end up buying more than just the free taco. All right, now so hold up, that sounds good too, but let's combine that with the, with the previous statistic and see how it really plays out in real life. All right, so let's use an actual baseline. Uh, the CEO of Yum Brands back in 2016, he said that the average American visits Taco Bell once every 11 days. That's, you know, three times every 33 days, but let's give Taco Bell the benefit of the doubt here. And let's say an average person visits Taco Bell three times a month. So let's say that average person signs up for the Taco Lover's Pass and now they've tripled their visits from three times a month all the way up to nine times a month. Now remember, they said that nearly half of all the Taco Pass visits result in more than just the one free taco being ordered. So of those nine visits, the customer is actually purchasing a meal on just four of those visits. The other five times, they're just getting the free taco and walking out. All right, still so sounds kind of okay, but keep in mind that those aren't four extra visits this person would have visited Taco Bell three times that month anyways, even without the Taco Pass. So that means for the average customer, they're actually only going to Taco Bell one extra time per month. Now, is it worth giving out nine free tacos just to get a customer to come back one extra time per month? Well, keep in mind, Taco Bell is not giving the tacos away. The customer paid $10 for those nine free tacos, which again, 
If the actual cost of those tacos is about 50 cents, those tacos cost the Taco Bell less than five bucks. They got the customer to come in for an extra meal that month and they still made $5 off the subscription fee. That's really where the genius part comes in. A lot of times companies look at the cost of acquiring a new customer. Here, Taco Bell is probably looking at the cost of getting an existing customer to come back one, one extra time per month. And the genius part is that they're not paying anything for that. The customer is actually paying them five bucks and coming in more often. Genius. The only way they could really lose money on this is if somehow someone managed to go to Taco Bell 20 times a month and never purchase anything else. So knowing all this, it'd be pretty hard for this thing to fail. Uh, they've already announced that since they uh, launched it in January, they've decided to make it a permanent offering. Yeah, no kidding. So it's probably gonna be around for a while, but I think the Achilles heel of this thing might be this final stat from Taco Bell. See, the Taco Lover's Pass doesn't auto-renew, meaning you have to consciously purchase a new Taco Pass every month in order to continue. And Taco Bell says only 16% of the first pass holders decided to renew. That is shockingly low. At that rate, unless Taco Bell is signing up a ton of new passes each month, the user base will be nearly nothing in a short amount of time. Even after just two months, if that trend continues, 16% of 16% would mean that only about 3% of the original subscribers would be left after, after three months. If I were Taco Bell, I probably wouldn't be so proud of that 16% renewal rate. Also, I, I get that it's a customer friendly choice, but why doesn't the pass auto renew? I think probably everyone expects it to. That's really a puzzling choice by Taco Bell. The only thing I can think of is maybe they're just trying not to push their luck, right? Give customers only good things to say, minimize any negative feedback so they can keep this subscription model going for the long run and maybe even expand it to quesadillas or who knows. If you're as fascinated as I am about how Taco Bell can profit from selling a taco subscription for $10, you'll also be interested in how Burger King can profit from selling 10 chicken nuggets for $1. I made a video explaining how Burger King manages this and you can click here to watch that video now.